Hi everyone, I'm so happy that we're back to this after a little week off. It feels like so much longer than a week to me. I don't know if it feels like that for you too, but I have to tell you, I had a blast reviewing everything as I prepared our first real set of pages for our Sloan Krauss story collaboration. Um, first of all, I just want to know how everyone's doing this evening. I noticed a couple comments about the timing and these are probably always going to be at the four o'clock hour on Mondays, but I was in catch up mode after last week. So, um, and also Facebook always shows you the time that you are in. So it will show you seven o'clock if you are on the East Coast right now, even though it's four o'clock here on the West Coast. So I don't know if that clears things up, but my goal is that we will probably always be doing live page readings on Mondays at four o'clock Pacific Standard, which is, you know, seven on the East Coast or six if you're in Central. Yay. Um, let's see what else I have some news in terms of the Sloan Krauss mysteries for the first time yet since, um, our COVID-19 experience, one of my books has gotten pushed back without a brew. The next book, book four in the Sloan Krauss mysteries is getting pushed back to November 10th. It was supposed to come out October 2nd or 3rd. I can't remember, but all hardcovers are getting shifted. So it's going to be a month later, but that's okay because it gives us more time to work on our spinoff together. And the third book in the series, oh, now I have to think of what it is, Beyond a Reasonable Stout, <laughs> comes out in paperback at the end of September. So if you're not cut up, caught up on the series, it'll be a great opportunity for you to snag a copy of book three and get caught up before Brew comes out in October. Yay. Um, also, for anyone who can't make the lives, just like before, I will be sharing these on our group page once the live is finished. So you can always come back and watch the video. Um, just a quick recap for anyone who didn't participate in our last story collaboration or who maybe you've forgotten because it's been a month or so since we wrapped up our last one. That is that these pages will also go up on my blog. So if you want to read them too, to really get a sense of where the story is going, they will also be available on my blog too. So hopefully that clears everything up. Let's see. Um, without further ado, I think it's going to be time to read some pages. This is part one of Final Draft, our Sloan Krauss collaboration. And um, I think you'll be excited because I tried to weave in some of the delicious Bavarian items that you were all discussing last week. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. The aroma of grapefruit, lemon, and pine in our latest nitro beer, Hoptoberfest, hit my nose as I finished filling the growler and screwed on the cap tight. I added it to a hefty box of supplies and called to Sloan. Hey, I'm taking off for Das Buk. Now, I also have to say, as an aside, this is me, Ellie, talking, not uh, Garrett on our pages here. I can't wait for April to hopefully make an appearance because I know that she'll butcher that pronunciation. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to the pages. I'll get the tasting set up and see you there. Sure, she waved, looking forward to it. I still can't believe Bertie Shaw is speaking tonight. I have loved his cookbooks for years. To be honest, I didn't know his name until you told me about him. He's a big deal, huh? He's probably the most renowned beer chef in the world. He's credited with having started the trend of baking and cooking with craft beer. I can't wait to meet him. I picked up the box. You won't have to wait long. He's speaking in an hour. Catch you over there. I took off. The one thing I didn't want to share with Sloan is what I'd heard from Gretchen, the owner of Das Mook. When I stopped into the bookshop to talk about our beer tasting for Bertie's signing, she had confessed that he had been a nightmare to work with. Among his dozens of requests was that he would have a pint of Northwest style IPA in his personal beer stein for the duration of his talk. In addition to providing tastes of our Hoptoberfest to the readers in attendance, my role 
was to make sure his stein was never empty. It was a weird request if you ask me, but hey, Gretchen was paying for our beer and it was a good opportunity to get our product in front of new people. The bookshop was located near the gazebo in the center of the village. Since I'd moved here from Seattle a couple of years ago, I still wasn't quite used to how chill everyone was, excepting, of course, busy festival weekends. Tonight, there was already a line of locals queuing up in front of the bookshop for the signing. Some of them looked like they'd been outside in the frigid late fall air for hours. One faithful reader was wrapped in a blanket and squeezing hand warmers. It's not unusual for Leavenworth to get a surprise October snow, and from the looks of the threatening clouds rolling in over the mountains, the plummeting temp, and the biting wind, we may be due for our first snow sooner than expected. I felt like a jerk cutting the line, but I held up a growler as I passed people waiting with copies of Bertie Shaw's cookbook already in hand. Don't hate, I'm bringing the beer. Everyone cheered and made room for me. Gretchen greeted me at the door. She looked frazzled. Her wiry cur curls frizzed out as if she had recently shoved her finger in a light socket. She wrung her hands together and then waved frantically for me get to get inside. Garrett, I'm so glad you're here. I could use a strong stout right about now. Bertie is killing me. I glanced around the warm bookshop with its gleaming oak hardwood floors, soft golden lighting, strategically placed couches and chairs for curling up with a new read, and shelf upon shelf of every title imaginable. Gretchen catered to the tourist crowd with an escapist read, with escapist reads like spy thrillers, mysteries, rom-coms, and recent bestsellers. There was also a wide selection of Pacific Northwest outdoor titles and plenty of German-inspired reads, in addition to a large culinary collection interspersed with poetry, classics, and more obscure authors. What's going on? She yanked my arm to the back of the store where rows of folding chairs had been set up in front of a podium. A single pewter stein, practically as large as the growlers that I brought, sat in the center of the podium. Shh, I can't talk about it. He'll be back any minute. Go ahead and do whatever you do for the beer tasting. Will this folding table be okay? I thought I had a white tablecloth, but apparently I only had black, sorry. I don't care, black is fine. She stared at me as if I was speaking another language. Is it? Oh, good. I've spent the last three days chasing down Bertie's wild request, so I guess I half expected you to have demands too. Nope. I set the box on the folding table. Craft beer is meant to sip slow. That's my philosophy for life. I gave up the need for self-imposed stress when I left the big city. Her shoulders relaxed and she exhaled a long sigh. Usually I would be right there with you, but these are unique times. I removed growlers and tiny red solo tasting cups. It didn't take long to prep the tasting station. Sloan had suggested tucking in some strands of dried hops and handwritten notes about each of the beers we'd be serving. Gretchen ushered a woman, a woman I didn't recognize in as I finished placing the boxes and extra supplies underneath the table. Garrett, this is Samantha. She's a baker from Seattle who Bertie absolutely raves about. She drove all the way here to bring us her delicious pastries to share. Many of them are inspired by Bertie's cookbook, right? Samantha pursed her lips into a tight smile. Hmm. That sounds like Bertie. She didn't expand. She went straight to work placing cake trays and plates with apple strudel, black forest cake, Bavarian cream tarts, German chocolate pedophores, and my favorite, the bee sting cake a sweet yeast bread cake filled with pastry cream and coated with honey and toasted almonds. Sloan had baked it for the pub a while back and it had disappeared within seconds. Sloan ducked in just before Gretchen opened the doors for the crowd. Wow, it's quite a scene out there. And I think it might snow. 
She rubbed her hands together and tugged off her parka. A reporter was the next person allowed in. He wore a thick trench coat. The press badge around his neck seemed like overkill, but who was I to judge? Gretchen hurried over to direct him. I thought you would never get here. Bertie wants you right up next to Nitro. He doesn't like his left profile being filmed, okay? The reporter angled his tripod per Gretchen's request. She addressed all of us. Is everyone ready? I'm going to open the doors and then I'll introduce Bertie. I figure we can have people get beers and pastries during a brief intermission. She started toward the door but stopped herself. Oh, Garrett, be sure to fill Bertie's stein. It's on the podium. I'm on it. I took a growler of our cherry IPA and filled the expensive stein. I hadn't seen one of it, one like it, since a trip to Germany right after college. It was designed out of jagged pewter with sharp, pointy angles that resembled Nauschenstein. The crowd filled in. An eager chatter reverberated in the air as they waited for Bertie's appearance. Gretchen scurried to the podium and tapped on the mic. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I'm the owner of Das Buch. As most of you know, we have a very special evening for you tonight. Nitro, our local craft brewery, is here with a taste of some of their award-winning fall beers. Samantha from Butternut Bakehouse in Seattle is here with her delicious pastries. We will also be recording tonight's event with the help of Josh from the Seattle affiliate station. If, any, if anyone is camera shy, just don't look his way. Everyone chuckled. But without further ado, the reason I know you're all here tonight is that the one and only Bertie Shaw is here in our little village. Bertie is the author of over a dozen cookbooks on beer and baking. He holds the records for most consecutive weeks on the New York Times bestseller list for any cookbook author. And he's the leading authority in the culinary world on baking with beer. Please join me in welcoming Bertie Shaw. Applause erupted. I was shocked to see a pudgy man in his late 50s shuffle slowly to the podium. A pair of wire rim, rim, wire rim, a pair of wire rim glasses rested on the bridge of his nose. His cheeks were flushed with color. Whether from the cold outside or maybe because he got an early start on drinking, I couldn't be sure. He took a long drink from his stein before glancing at Josh and making a slicing motion across his neck. What are you doing there? Josh looked to Gretchen and shrugged. Gretchen frowned. Is that the wrong angle? Is he supposed to be on the other side? Bertie shook his head, forget it. He then proceeded to launch into a 45 minute self-inflated discussion about his many, many accomplishments. When he finish, finished, he stared at Josh again. He waved Gretchen over. I need my drink refreshed and I need him gone. Uh, I don't understand. He does though, doesn't he? Bertie ignored Gretchen and focused his gaze on the camera. At that same moment, the door opened, a gust of wind blew in, followed by, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Did you see that coming? Okay, good. <laughs> so there are a couple really interesting things. When I was going through your suggestions for what delicious Bavarian bites might be served, someone suggested the bee sting cake, which I made a few years ago when I was working on, I think it was the Pine of No Return. I found pictures of it. It was the most amazing bake. And I think I'm going to need to bake it again while we're working on this. It's a really interesting cake. It's not what you think of as a traditional cake. It's like a yeasty, doughy, sweet bread. 
And then you put this delicious Bavarian thick cream in the middle and glazed honey and toasted almonds. It's amazing. So, um, yeah. And I think we have to, you know, spend a little time talking about some other beerish, maybe some sort of dark chocolate brownie or stout because it's fall. I don't know. Um, the other thing that came up when I was working on this is my family and I did go to Germany quite a few years ago now. My kiddo was just tiny and toehead blonde at the time. Um, and we visited Nauschenstein. I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. I am hopefully not as bad as April, but my German is terrible. Um, but the castle resembles Cinderella. In fact, that's what Cinderella's castle was based on. I will share photos here in the group of it later this week, just for inspiration. And they had these incredible, just dense, heavy pewter steins for sale that now in hindsight, I wish I bought, but at the time I was like, oh my gosh, how would you even fit that in the suitcase and the weight to get it back on the plane? But now I'm like, oh, this is such a perfect murder weapon. Who knew when we first started the process of coming up with ideas that um, we were gonna have a beer stein as our murder weapon? Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to go back. That's what the tech guy says. So I'm down with that. Yeah, I need a research trip. Maybe we all need a little venture to uh, Germany once this is all over, right? <laughs> oh, Sherry, you should be an actress. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my uh, my tech guy's cracking up too. I definitely don't want to be an actress. Mm. Um, I do really enjoy reading with intonation. When my son was little, I loved reading aloud to him and like, trying to do all the voices and everything. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be on stage. I like being right here in my basement and usually with um, just all of my words. <laughs> um, yeah, you're feeling why Birdie might be killed. I know. Um, I kind of vacillated on this one when I was first pulling all of your thoughts and suggestions together. Because we've already done this one time, now I feel like I've learned a lot in the process too. So one of my goals is to weave in some of the ideas that maybe didn't make it on a final vote. I'm gonna try to see if I can um, sneak some little Easter eggs in for you. Um, and initially I thought, oh, maybe Bertie is just more like an unfortunate victim, but I've decided no, he's just kind of a pompous jerk. <laughs> You're already ready for more. Well, that's good because we're gonna move on to what your task is next. I have two questions for you all to think about this week. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to be thinking about, number one is, dun, 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 what does Birdie know about Josh? Okay, so we know immediately that Birdie is behind the podium. <laughs> Poor Gretchen is running around with her frizzed hair and you know, heart palpitations <laughs> trying to um, meet his every demand and request. And she assumes that Birdie doesn't like the camera angle. But there, if you read the language, there's maybe something else amiss. I don't know. Is it just a camera angle? Or does Birdie actually know something about Josh, who we really haven't even heard speak yet? <laughs> okay, so that's your first assignment. I want you to think about that. And as always, like we did, in case anyone didn't participate in our Big Shop Mystery spinoff, the goal here, because we're writing a short, right? We're condensing what would normally be a 300 page mystery into about 50 pages. So we have to make sure the plot moves forward pretty quickly. And we're gonna have a tight number of suspects. We're only gonna have four suspects because we just don't have that many pages to devote to developing suspects who are gonna help us get to um, unearthing who the killer is gonna be. So when you're thinking about these questions that I'm posing, I want you to think about motive and intention and also perhaps any secrets um, that one of these nefarious creatures might reveal. Okay, so that's assignment number one. What does Bernie know about Josh? Assignment number two is who walks in to the signing late? The door blows open, there's a gust of wind. We know that a storm may be um, brewing outside. And uh, now we need to know who walks into the signing late. Here's what I want you to think about with this particular question in mind. I'm gonna lead you a little bit in that, again, because we want four suspects 
And because we're working on what is likely going to be more like an Agatha Christie locked room style murder, we already know that we've got Garrett and Sloan in the room. We've got the bookstore owner, Gretchen. We've got Bertie, the victim. We have Josh, the cameraman. So we need one more suspect to enter the bookshop, okay? So think suspects with that question. Who could it be? It could be anyone who is already part of the series, if you've read the Sloan Krauss Mysteries and you have an idea there, or it could be someone totally new. It could be a tall, dark, and menacing stranger. It could be someone from Bertie's past. It could be a tourist in from Seattle. I don't know. This is all up to you to decide, but I want you to be thinking about it with a little intention about knowing that this is another suspect who's gonna be coming into the signing late. And how rude to enter a signing 45 minutes late. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so that should get you started with some new sleuthing and plotting. What's gonna happen is we're gonna go back into a rhythm like we did with a brunch with death. And that is that once I send out these questions to you, you'll have about a day and a half. So by midday Thursday, we'll cut them off. I will come up with, I'll pull together four, five, six, depending on how many options. I feel like I could probably pull together 20 options from everything you come up with, um, but we've got to keep it tight. So I will pull together some options and then we'll put them out for a vote. The vote will go out on Thursday, late afternoon Thursday, and then I will share new pages with you again live on Monday. And I think we'll just get back in that rhythm. Hopefully um, it will stretch your creative energy and your writing muscle as we go through this process together. I love that you guys are already coming up with um, thoughts and suggestions. So keep those coming as the next day or so goes on. And then, like I said, I'll gather those. I will also um, put the pages up on my blog. So if you want to go do another deeper read through and try to pull out anything you can, feel free. And yeah, I think that's it. Oh, well, my tech guy says we'll see if we can post them in the group too. Maybe there's a way that we can post them in the actual group and you don't even have to leave the group page. That would be dreamy. Um, I've enjoyed also watching you all connect um, as we collaborate together, which is the whole goal. For me, in a collaboration, it's it's just amazing to watch you all build relationships with each other. I love that piece of it. I try to um, take myself out of the equation as much as I can because I do want to leave what happens next every time up to you. But um, in this case, I just want to plant those couple little seeds that we're thinking about for suspects, locked room. We're at this stage now where we want to think motive and then what potential, you know, clues and red herrings are we going to try to weave in in this fun little spinoff? Um, okay, let's see. Um, next up, I'm going to do a live on my main Facebook page, so not in the group, but this Friday, which is August 14th at 10 a.m., I'm going to do another author edition of my Five Things Friday with Esme Addison. Esme's new debut book just came out a couple months ago. And so I'm excited to chat with her and maybe introduce you to her if she's a new writer to you. That'll be so fun. And I'm really enjoying getting to do five things and um, just spreading some mystery love into the world because we all need that right now. Um, and then otherwise, we will be back here in a week for part two, dun, dun, dun. Um, I can't not do sound effects. It's so terrible. I can't not do sound effects and I cannot stop licking my fingers when I turn pages. I've just decided that I'm not even going to bother trying because it is what it is. Uh, let's see. I think that wraps up our quick little page reading for the evening. I hope everybody has something fun planned for the evening, I'm about to go watch uh, the Timbers. I'm a huge soccer fan, thanks to my tech guy uh, who played soccer and who got me addicted to the game. And the MLS is back for this really mini bubble tournament in Florida. And our Portland Timbers are in the finals tonight. So I can't wait to cheer them on. It's so weird to watch 
sports without people in the stands, but they pipe in the crowd noise. So then if I'm just watching the field, I'm like, oh, that's right. There are crowds. Oh, no, no, they're not. <laughs> Maybe we need to pipe in more crowd noise and sound effects for these pages. Yeah, yeah, the tech guy says thumbs up to that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm so thrilled to be doing this process with you again. It's great fun. I hope it's fun for you. I hope it's going to be another distraction as we move through August ah, and into fall, and um, then we should be wrapping this project up just in time for the release of book number four in the Sloan Cross Mysteries. The last thing I want to say before we end is it is really strange for me to write from another character's perspective because, as most of you know, uh, most of my mysteries, if not like 99%, excepting a little... Um, bit of nothing but trouble are written in the perspective of a female protagonist. So when I started writing Garrett, I had this scene where, you know, he's describing putting like really pretty hop vines and twinkle lights on the table. And then I'm like, no, this is Garrett. Like Sloan can tell him to do that. But um, it's good for me because it challenges me too. And it forces me to step out of my normal writing space head and think from the perspective of another character. So that's a bonus um, unexpected gift for me. So I thank you for that. And if I start to read it in the voice of Sloan, just like say in the comments, like, hey, enough. He's a guy. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay, well, enjoy the rest of your night and I will see you in the group soon. Happy plotting. I can't wait to see what you come up with.